crazy. I told you I was a pop star. See the little recording signal. Love it, love it. And all right. Audio, audio guys, right? I you see your audio. Yeah, your audio is good. Yeah, okay, cool. yeah, it's it's good. Um, all right. Well, here we are. So uh, this is the first segment. Uh, this is who's doing these things. So first, I want to ask, uh, who are you? And uh, yeah, who are you? <laughs> I didn't know that's how we gonna die like right into it, but <laughs> <laughs> you say you try something new. I'm like, huh? <laughs> um, let's see. My government name is Terrell. Hey, Terrell. Uh, um, <laughs> but I go by the nickname in this little creative industry, and by my like uh, close family and friends, uh, Rel. Yeah. And um, oh, as Adelise, other... Adelise says, Relly Rels. Yeah, yeah, actually, it's funny. Uh, my aunts use uh, use that actually, uh, really well. Um, really? Yeah, <laughs> so it's it's weird hearing her say that times, but you know what's so funny though? Adelise does have very auntie energy though. <laughs> she, she has like Dominican auntie energy, like <laughs> she's older than all of us. So. True, true. <laughs> but now, um, yeah, that's 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 what I go by. I'm a, a, you ask what I do, uh, creative, in a sense. I work on podcasts. I'm actually into the video editing atmosphere. Yes. Um, that's really about it. I'm a. I have a nine to five working in school, so I was. I'm actually still at work now. Yes, go uh, on. I, I, I'm, make, I'm making time. I'm making Come time on. for this. Yes. Um, but yeah, that's real. That's all I do. And um, can you recall, I want to know, like, uh, like, how do we connect, like, our connection to one another? And I'm trying to remember, I mean, it was definitely, so, like, way back in the day, the day being, like, what was it, 2015, 16? 16. 2016. So, we, we actually connected because um, back when I had another podcast called uh, The Cure right. with, with a mutual friend of yours, uh, of ours. Um, we, when I guess everybody was in like growing phrase because you had the bodega, yes, and um, yes. and we actually had the girls. We come from Queens on the podcast, yes, and um, and I, back then that's when again I was like interested in, like in podcasts and trying to figure out like oh uh, how to like grow the podcast and like how to meet other podcasters and stuff. But when I was like Google and stuff like that, it was more so um. It was more so like trying to figure out what are the New York podcasters out there. So when the girls had Jaw on their show, we was like, oh, these people seem dope when we listened to their episode. But that's how we kind of got connected. And it took like months in the making because <laughs> or it was like schedules just didn't match up. So yeah. we, like we were supposed to got together like since like early March, April. We didn't yeah. really get together yeah. until yeah. like September. <laughs> yeah. So it was like that. And um. Yeah, and ever since then, y'all came by the studio. We came by all uh, y'all studio, and ever since then, it's been like a growing friendship. Yeah, and we did that in one weekend, right, back to back. We yeah, did. y'all came that Saturday, and we came to y'all that Sunday. Yeah, wow, that's crazy. <laughs> and it's been history ever since. Look at us now, yeah. 2020 quarantine. <laughs> <There's that. laughs> yeah, quarantine. <laughs> Trying to figure out how this podcast is going to work for everybody. That is like <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, love that. So speaking of quarantine, I want to know how are you feeling and handling things during all of this? Uh it's a it's a roller coaster. One day I'm like cool in quarantine. Um I still have work to do. Um and the next is like, okay, I'm tired of living this Groundhog Day movie over and over again because uh, I have the same routine like practically every day, Monday through Sunday. Right. Um, just waking up, uh, taking a shower, um, to the point like, now nah, I'm like, fuck it, I ain't seeing nobody. I take a shower almost every other day. I'm Hello. Playing all this. Um, <laughs> I was gonna say good for you because <laughs> I know a lot of people don't gave up. They like, I, uh, I'm, I'm like, who, who, who am I seeing? Right. Like, this one, like it's just me, my father, my brother, um, 
he's but well, he's in the healthcare, so he has to like still go out sometimes. Okay. Um, but just me and my father in in the, in, in the house, and I'm like, who am I impressing? So it's like, but it's like the same routine every single day. Me waking up, uh, like I said, choose to jump in the shower or not. Then right. like at eight o'clock, I had to like log onto my computer just to try to catch up on emails from because I I told you I work in a school from faculty to like students so that's like from 14 year olds to almost like 80 90 year olds like <laughs> <laughs> so so it's just like me and then like it's just like some days it's like oh like it's very busy for for us the other days it's like today I only had like one big thing I had to do and I had a like a crazy headache a raging headache so like right before we was re- recording this I was like, I'm just gonna leave my computer, like just connected and act like I'm online. And I'm just gonna take a quick nap <laughs> because I, I just I couldn't I couldn't really focus um once I was finished with my project. And um and that's what I did. But like uh, like I said, other days it's just like it's, it's roller coasters up and down, up and down. And um I'm slowly after work is done at the end of each day, I also, like I said, I'm an editor for other podcasts, so I'm doing that as well when, when we had downtimes. So it's like, that's my daily routine almost every day. It's like, try to be done editing like around five, six o'clock okay. at night, uh, just again, catch up on like stuff I missed throughout the day, catch up on Black Twitter. Um, Hello. And uh, try to uh, like squeeze in like video game time sometimes, um, okay. checking in with my cousins and whatnot. But it's I'm I'm slowly losing it mm. in a sense of um in a sense of like I'm getting bored and I'm getting like anxious of like home be, like just being home like I want to see my friends I want to go out. I, I I don't like the I don't like the restriction that I have of not being able to like go outside. <laughs> yes. No, I can, I completely feel that. And and that's very real. Um, but it's it, it also sounds like though, like thank God, like you've still been like going to work and you also have a very uh large creative outlet. So you have I mean, we've been in quarantine for what, like maybe two months and some change. So you've had things to occupy your time throughout this whole thing. And it's See, that's but that's the thing. I've been I slightly longer because uh before they said, Hey, um everybody like on quarantine i was there for almost like a week before right because my school's like nah at this <laughs> um <laughs> we're not risking our our faculty and the students yeah so keep on like coming to school and, and before it got like crazy i think it was like the 13th or something like that that's when they started like saying hey quarantine so i've been home since like technically like almost the 9th of march sheesh yeah that's a that's a long time and you don't and I mean, like, do you go on, like, any type of, like, store runs? Like, do you go outside for, like, a walk? Like, do you... Ever since... I feel bad. But ever since I uh, discovered Instacart, like, a month before uh, the quarantine and all this started, I honestly been, like, just praising them and, like, using them because uh, I haven't. The last time I actually been on a store run was the first week of quarantine when actually that weekend me me you addy and uh yeah Mo- no, monet hey. was hanging was hanging out i was like oh i never noticed wegmans over here yeah and, and then like i was like oh they so fun <laughs> funny fact um that day you know how it was the shelves was packed <laughs> we went in there yeah so let's say that was that sunday that tuesday morning when i went with my father half empty like you, like I was like the fuck. It was just packing it out. Day. They got nervous. <laughs> so it was like half that these. But yeah, that's the last time I like I was actually out at a supermarket. My father still trying to be like the Titanic captain, and, like go down with mm-hmm. the ship, and he still goes out from time to time. Oof. Um, the just to pick up like little odds and ends, and then uh, my brother uses his uh. He like I said, he's in the healthcare, so he's able to go to like Costco's and like jump the line sometimes. Oh, okay, that's cute. Um, but yeah, it's been like a mixture of my father going now, my brother going now, and then like me using Instacart. Wow. So I haven't like really been out. Um, I I the last time I actually was, I think I went out outside was a couple of weeks ago. My father had to do, uh, get emergency surgery on his eye, so I had mm-hmm. to pick him up from the hospital. 
Okay. So that's I think that's the last time I actually like been out. And everything I'm assuming everything went well with that. Yeah, he um what it is or what he think of that. One is two things. One, he's getting old. Two, um those masks that they tell people to wear, like those construction like masks and stuff. He think like it kind of messed with him when it snapped back to his eye. Cause you know, like it had the elastic part. Yeah. So it like snapped back in his eye. And, like he couldn't see for, he like, he kept his mouth shut about it for like almost two weeks. But by then, like the, like the last, what caused the emergency surgery was he couldn't see out his eye no more. Oof. So, um, he had to get a COVID test that Sunday, um, came back negative. So at least I know I'm negative <laughs> from COVID because I've been, like I said, in here with him. Right. Um, and that Tuesday he had to get his surgery, and like I said, was, he, the surgery lasted like an hour, hour and a half. Um, so it's just that you know the health field, the healthcare, like hospitals, they're not allowing people to bring down. Can't go in. So I had to like wait for them to call me to tell them that he's ready and whatnot. So that's the last time I actually like been out and like driving through the city. That was that was. It reminds me of I Am Legend. <laughs> it's different. It's very. The roads are open. Yeah, so. it was like nobody out on the street, and I was like, "Yo, this is the most emptiest I have seen Manhattan." Yeah, like even like, hate to say, it, but even like Chinatown was like, like, like it was like I could see a tumbleweed just going by. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell? Like no traffic at. at I had to pick up like two thirty, three o'clock in the afternoon. I'm like, there's no traffic out here. None. Normally, what there would be. Honestly, that would that it's honestly been one of my favorite parts of quarantine because I've been <laughs> still driving and doing things every day. And I'm just like, wow, I'm getting to places in the actual amount of time that it should based on the geography of New York City. You know what I mean? Right. I think I, even like getting here, like I left out at what, like maybe, no, I left out at 3.30 something. And normally I wouldn't be here until like 4.30. I got here at like 3.50 and I had time to come upstairs and you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, but you rode your bike too, right? No, 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 I took the car. I took the car. Okay. Yeah. Um, I went on a uh, jog beforehand instead of- Got you. Right How has quarantine been for you? Quarantine has been, like, honestly, it's been very uh, normal because I'm kind of classified as essential also. I'm definitely classified as essential um, because if we don't go to work, then the kids have no home. Um, so, yeah, I've been working throughout this entire thing, and my routine, my schedule is the same. Um, the only thing that got cut for me was the club. So um, oh, I got yeah. my weekends back to myself if that makes sense and um yeah it's literally the only difference is the weekends for me whereas yeah, i see you be like living your best life on the weekends. yes it is <laughs> so nice like i've been like going upstate on sundays and just chilling on saturdays um i've been resting a lot i've incorporated video games back into my life um so i've been it's been really good i've been ba -da -ba -ba -ba. <laughs> Loving it. Uh, anyway, uh, I, I, okay. I see. I see. I, I see. You've been like on the Nintendo Switch a lot when you be posting on your Insta story. Yeah. I'm like, yo, he, does he not play online? Because I'll tell you for like, like, to add me, and, and I'm like, <laughs> but all the games that you play is like those RPG type of games. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It, it's it's so funny because I got the so my brother got the Switch for me. Like I don't know. I, he got he got it for me right before I went on tour. So that was December of 2018. He I got the switch, right? And I don't know. I'm just like weird with like internet. It's just very like I don't know, because there's been like periods of time when like I just haven't had internet in my house or like the internet has been like very slow. So I'm not one, I'm not, I feel like I'm still, I'm just getting into like this new generation of like gaming. And I'm definitely not familiar with the whole like connecting the game to like online because like even though like I, my mother got me a ps4 against my wishes um <laughs> same thing with like a ps3 but like the last gaming system i was really into like i had like over 60 games was the playstation 2 and that was like before college and that was the last time i really really played video games so i'm just not used to the concept of like getting online and like online gaming it's just it's like I, I, I don't know it's weird for me um I literally just connected my switch to the internet, I think two weeks ago. 
And then it started like updating like crazy. I think I have a, I don't even know if I have a friend code yet. Like, I don't even know how to do that. RJ was like getting frustrated with me. He's like, bitch, I done told you to add me so many times. So you're not the only one. <laughs> the, I'm, I'm slowly easing my way into it. But yeah, I'm definitely, because I, I don't know, I feel like it's because I'm an only child. I'm like such an RPG kid. So it's mm-hmm. like all my games are like one player. It's just me. You know? Yeah, I just I actually just got into that too. Like I'm playing right now, Animal Crossing. All right, um, I that. How is it? It's it's okay. Like it's a baby version of Sims. Like I feel like every time when somebody like asks me how it is, I have to first describe it as just picture the Sims, but right. a baby version of it. Okay. And it's and it basically like it, I see how it's good for kids to teach you how to also like deal with money Ooh. in a sense. Um, yeah, I love that. Like me and my coworkers got this thing now. Like after this, going into each other's islands and like sell uh, coconuts, um, because the price value at one of my co coworkers' house is uh for a thousand, where on my island it's only uh I think roughly about seven hundred. Okay, you got the discount of coconuts. So um, but no, he has like if I was to sell my coconuts. My coconuts that I have to his island, I would get thousand dollars. But like, if he wants to come to my island, he only get seven fifty. Oh, okay. so like, it teach you how to invest and whatnot. Um, that's lit. Yeah, but it's cool. And uh, of course, Pokemon. Now that's all I'm playing, and um, mm-hmm. and occasional Smash. That's it. Same. Whenever I go to RJ's, I will, you know, we'll play a little bit of like Smash and things like that. Um, I want to know. Uh, has anything significant or life changing happened to you during this time? Um, any like huge job shares? Anybody like passed away or got like extremely ill? Anyone that you know personally that might have contracted Corona and it was like a little scary period? Um, and if no, so, then God bless. No, I mean, yeah, I'm about to say it, like. I have been lucky, like nobody, at least to my knowledge, close to me hasn't been contracted with it. Um, besides, like the life changing thing was like, you know, I'm wondering if my father was gonna make it out of eye surgery because he also has like a like a weak heart at the same time. So they was like hesitant to like put him on the, on the anesthesia. Yeah. So that that was like nerve wracking for the first couple of days. Um, uh, and then wondering if he's gonna contract COVID from just being in the hospital, that right. hospital. So that was like that was a nerve wracking couple of days. Um, there was one person on my job who actually, con- like, got had it, and days before, like, they announced that person, uh, we all was at like a function together. So it was kind of like nerve wracking, like thinking like, okay, we was around this person. Um, did we like engage? So I was like. It was the time where I like actually just stood in my room. I don't know if my father like really paying attention, but I just like stood in my room most most of the like, day and night because I was like wondering like if I have it, okay, where the symptoms at. Then after like symptoms, like you know, I haven't like got any symptoms. I'm like, okay, I must have. And like I said, for him to go into his surgery, he had to uh, get tested. Get tested first. That's like a prerequisite now. Right. Um, and when he came back negative, I was like, okay, so I guess I'm not. <laughs> I guess I'm negative <laughs> as well. So, um, <laughs> so, um, but like nobody close to us in my family or friends uh, had it. And thankfully, knock on wood, yeah. nobody, uh, to at least, like I said, to my knowledge, doesn't still. Good, good. Love that. Yes. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Um, we're going to move over into the next segment. This is The Things. Um, so I want to know, and we, we kind of got a little bit into it, but I just want to clarify. Um, I want to know what are the things that you used to do pre-corona versus what are the things you've been occupying your time with during corona? Pre-corona was mostly still me editing for podcasts, uh, weekly podcasts. I have a client now. You know from, but he's not gonna get this recognition on the show today. No. Um, but now he's doing a nightly podcast. So like right after this, I have to jump to finish editing his show. Wow. Um. Uh. But pre-corona, it was just mostly we're doing a weekly podcast. I had two, three clients. Um. I have to. Uh. I had monitor my uh, student podcast, student led podcast, 
Yeah. So I was like making sure they ain't not saying nothing crazy to like tarnish <laughs> the name. Um, I was in the beginning of the year. Uh, I was taking classes, Adobe classes. Only went to like two though, um, <laughs> <laughs> for like learning video. Um, so Adobe Premiere. Um, I think they're offering but, like three months for free now. Yeah, well, they're offering yeah the uh, uh, software. But I was taking classes to like learn how to actually like edit stuff Use and whatnot. It, yeah. Um, but when this whole Corona thing, they actually just refunded my money. When this whole Corona thing happened, um, it's it was uh, it was me doing that. But now I I told you this like even when we hook uh linked up that weekend, I was trying to get heavy into the vlogs. Yeah, and I was like walking around with the camera and whatnot. So um, I've been like doing that in a sense, like trying to look at old footage. What can I like use from like my YouTube channel? Right. Um, and I was I only released two videos on my YouTube channel because like I, all the other footage is like just fooling around like between <laughs> y'all and like and like stuff like I don't I also not trying to incriminate anybody. So um. <laughs> um it, like and that's like this is all during Corona. Like I'm learning how to like use iMovie a lot now, and still use Premiere from time to time. But I'm learning to use them a lot. Um, and yeah, and that's it really. Just trying to figure out how can I vlog more. I think me and my friends is gonna start like uh, seeing each other in person soon. Good. We've been like planning it because it's like you know if, if if either of us had it, we 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 passed the two week mark. So right. uh, the only thing we, I guess we have to worry about for, which I may try to see if I could do this week is to see if we had the antibodies, like if we had it, we just didn't have no symptoms. So um, I'm gonna try to do that this week because one of them just had a kid um, and I'm not trying to be at fault for their baby having Corona. Right. Um, but yeah, that's all I've really been doing and like perfecting. I've been playing video games more. Um, that's it. Like trying to podcast with my other cousin, my bodyguard, but mm -hmm. it's like even with him, it's like sometimes like even as we like quarantine, it's still hard to get our schedules matched because like women, I had the energy to like want to record, then I'm like just drained <laughs> at the end of each day. So it's like just stuff like that. Um, well, yeah, that's it. Okay. Um, and. So, and then we've also spoken about what you've been occupying your time with right now, the video games, the work. The video games, the work. Uh, yeah, nine to five still happening. Because yep. technology okay. doesn't sleep. The last day of school is the eighth for the kids or something like that in June. So um, to, this is the seniors last week. So that's one grade I don't have to worry about. So, um, right. um, but yeah, it's just like stuff like that. And like I said, editing for, for my clients. So um, I want to ask, what would you say your main thing in life is? And can you tell or like teach us like a little bit about it? My main thing in life is, uh, what are you talking about like working wise? Whatever that means for you. Oh, what I'm a, like perfection, or like a master in. I feel like I'm, I'm, a, I'm a master. In, or, uh, or just whatever either what you're a master in or most passionate about. And you don't have to be a master about that yet. Um, both, uh, just technology and podcasting almost. Okay. Um, technology, I grew up, I grew up always wanting to do technology. I got a degree in it, uh, computer science. I did like a lot of things as far as uh, in my undergrad, um, dealing with like computer related stuff. So I just brought that with me when I graduated and um got into like a like a tech assistant type of field and like uh training like teachers like I mostly stayed in education because um two things uh, I always did summer camps at, like in my undergrad for like you know uh, summer money yeah um and two I kind of fell in love with the education aspect of it like I know I ain't, I, I'm not like I try teaching like the two three times it's like honestly not cut out for me because that's like just more work and but I loved it um but I, I just want to stay in the education because it's uh 
You ever watch Boy Meets World? Yeah. You want to be like Mr. Feeney? I want to be the Mr. Feeney, the black Mr. Feeney to 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 kids. Yes. So, Ooh, that's a nice Twitter um, name, the black Mr. Feeney. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, like, most of, like, um, my job is predominantly white. It's a predominantly white institute. So, and it's like maybe 20, maybe a little bit uh, lower percent of uh, students of color. Mm. So, uh, all the students of color, of course, gravitates to the faculty of color. Right. So, that's, I have some like, you know, gravitating towards me. But I'm, I don't know if it's, <laughs> I don't know if it's because, oh, this is the black, cool, hip guy. Or what? I mean, you see how I dress it, like coming from, uh, uh, like from, coming from work to like the studio and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if it's because of, if it's because of that. Um, I get in more of the white students, <laughs> and it's cool. I mean, I, I, no racism in this blood. Um, <laughs> it, it's just I, I just find it like you know find it fascinating that like we live in this world like where racism exists and like white students kind of like look up to the black figures in the school like i'd be having like deep conversations with these kids more than like the old students of color who they just want like want life advice um right. and that when i when i found that some quote unquote calling i uh just said okay it's meant for me to stay in schools and like try to like help make a better future so hopefully i could like a small percentage of racism throughout the country and in the world whatever um, and then podcasting. Podcasting, I, when we first started out, um, when I had my own uh, with uh, with your friend, he, um, I was mostly like doing like the, the research and like figuring out how to grow and like, you know, how to like maintain, like how to be better than the last episode or whatever. Right. So um, I go to a lot of events. I go to, uh, I study, I study online. I go to like these random webinars that be happening now. Well, it's webinars most now because yep. what's happening. But I, I went to like the, all the workshops and stuff, and like you know, I try to incorporate what I learned from uh from those workshops and stuff into the, like the podcast. And I was given opportunities to like work with popular uh podcast networks, and um they showed me some good things and to help. Or like perfect my editing craft and um while still trying to keep my creative juices on the same like to, to incorporate the, my creative stuff into like ep, like my clients episodes my episodes and whatnot right. so i know the ins and outs of podcasting like all networks for the future for like the advice one piece of advice i don't know if you had like have a question like this like uh after this yeah i actually do so it's <laughs> <laughs> Literally, I was gonna say, <laughs> what advice would you give to anybody trying to navigate either of those like fields? Um, okay, so let me fin so let me first start off with the technology. Just do it like like anything that you like passionate about. Just do it. Continue to do it. But you could balance the two out, like your uh, professional and your uh, creative. Mm -hmm. But and I'm I'm going to let you know that eventually one will have to come before the other. Mm. Like I, right now, I'm at the point of it's at like almost at half. Okay. Almost. So I'm still able to balance out. However, my professional is still higher up than my creative because, like I said, I just do this. Like I can't say I'm passionate about it, but I love. Uh, but I do love it. Right. Um. But if I was to like be like, no, I'm not doing this again. I'm able to do that. Like just um flick the switch off. Like it's how 106. Yeah, like how 106 say, oh, I'm done. <laughs> they shut off the light that i i could do that with this creative um project um okay. but i just like i just like love the connections that i'm making with people and like loving that <laughs> i sound like a cloud chaser but i'm loving that i'm able to uh connect with famous people yeah like, <laughs> from it. yeah yeah um but yeah but you're a professional if you love it stick to it however there's gonna come a point where your creative is gonna have to either somehow, I guess, twist up into your uh, professional or you're just going to have to, like, figure out what is more important. Yeah, like something's um, going to win. Something's got to win, yeah. Um, the podcasting, those, 
Monique, it's funny, Monique from We Come From Queens, and uh, I'm sure you're probably going to have her on the show. Yeah, I'm sure you're going to have her on the show. Um, She texted me the other day. She texted me saying, um, I I, want to go verbatim, but I have, like, so many text messages, I can't even find her name. Um, She asked, how... (laughs) She said... uh, she said, "Why do why people want to start a podcast and always ask how can they make money from it?" And I said, "LOL." And she said, "How do you handle being the podcast guru?" One, I'm not no podcast guru. So, <laughs> <laughs> but the the advice that I gave her, um, because apparently people must be coming up to her. Um, first of all, podcasting is not easy. Um, yeah. Any creative project is not easy because you again have to put in your work because it's you, you you don't want to half ass anything. Um, I said for me like you know, to answer her question and to those who probably had the same question like oh I could go into podcasts and making money like the rest of them maybe you cannot. Um, <laughs> that's just me being blunt and honest. Sure. Um, don't go into the tension thinking like you're uh uh going to make money because you're going to be disappointed when. After like a month or two, you're gonna wonder like, oh, why nobody wants to work with me? Because you don't have the numbers. That's here's the here's the uh here's the here's the cheat code. Um, podcast networks don't even like look at you unless you're practically averaging about fifteen to twenty thousand listens an episode. Mm. Um, and only way for you to like even get looked at by a sponsor is you have to match that. Or if you even charting on iTunes, right? Because they that that's that's what I noticed. A lot of networks was like looking at on iTunes. Um, they see they see your uh, if they see your podcast in the top hundred, they that's when they reach out to you and be like, hey, let's uh, I see your podcast in the charts. This that and the third. Would you mind? Uh, or we would like to work with you. This that and the third. Um. But if you don't have those numbers, nobody's gonna really check you. Right. And I mean, that's that's just that's just me being honest. Like Good. I I don't even with my current podcast. Like before I left the Cure, the Lounge, whatever the case may be, we was only averaging like roughly anywhere between like nine to nine to about anywhere between like I'm gonna say a thousand until until about fifteen hundred. Mm-hmm. Um. And we, that was always been the Cares numbers, um, even into the lounge. And um, it, it was hard to like have these uh, uh, sponsors like even consider us. They went based off of most of like my following on like social media also and like uh like what kind of pull like we have on social media so that's another thing to like always consider tell them about your following right again they won't entertain you with a thousand followers they won't they can't um they will only entertain you like i said 15 10 to 15 k and up but even with that sometimes they they chuckle because it's like Okay, do you have the engagement? Do you have the outreach? Like, how how is people responding to your tweets? This, that, and the third. Yeah. If you don't, another thing is, if you don't have a niche or niche, whatever how they say it. Again, what's why would they want to work with you? Yep. Like, it just makes it harder to like build an audience when you don't right. have a niche. Yeah. Right. right. So. Don't go into thinking like you're going to make money from it because it's like easy to do. Whatever case me, you're not going to make money. Like you, you know, we've been grinding since I think the same time, like 2015, 2016. Mm-hmm. Been grinding since, and I've been like trying to like help everybody win. But <laughs> these sponsors also they know they know the system. Right. They know they know how many uh, listeners you're pulling in even before you do. Hello. They had the they had they had the accurate number. Yeah, they have those so, analytics. Um, it's hard. It's hard. Um, so you would say that you have to, you have to love it if you're going to get into this. You have to love it. Cause don't, don't do it. Cause you think, oh, I'm going to make money. From it. You it's have to love it. Yeah. Like, but I honestly being, me being in this, in this since 2015 to what, uh, 2020. Well, I've been in this kind of longer, but, yeah. um, oh, yeah. I've been, I've been technically podcasting since, uh, 
2011, 20, 2010, 20, yeah, 2011. Yeah. Um, but don't go on to like thinking like you could be like everybody else, don't copy anybody else. Um, uh, craft. Cause that's that was our mistake as well too. And when we first started, we were trying to go based off like the read and boy, you're an idiot. Mm. And it's eventually we kind of found our own lane. That's what grew our listenership even more when we kind of found our own lane. Um, but yeah, don't go into like trying to like uh, copy anybody else's craft. Um, you overall had to love it and had to find your own your own uh niche niche whatever. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, we're going to get into the last segment. This is after the thing. So I want to know, how do you plan on moving forward? And is there a thing that you discovered during Corona that you like to continue doing after Corona? Yeah, this video editing is fun. Um, I don't know. Going back to like the like outreach, I didn't think I, like people actually like follow what I do on like Twitter and Instagram. But this Corona thing, this corona thing uh like i said uh it got me like editing videos and um i uploaded two videos onto uh youtube and and both videos have around uh 1000 views yes. but again that's that's me like doing back work and as well like uh, promoting it on like vlogs <laughs> on these blogs uh site commenting on other like like i said like technically my day starts at eight o'clock in the morning until about roughly about 10, 11 o'clock at night. Mm-hmm. Um, but my eight to, my job is eight to four. Then my podcasting is from like one to, I, I always try to be done by five, five thirty. but like right now my client uh, had to jump on a, a point interview for his podcast. So he stopped recording his main segment. So I, have, I know right after this, I have to jump back into it. Um, But my podcasting like, work starts from like one to five ish um and then like like i said i decide if i want the time to like do any other activities as far as like video editing as far as like uh promoting or whatever the case may be that's a lot of back-end work right i definitely once corona is done i'm definitely going to go into it more heavy i'm actually like uh looking for a camera to like have better quality videos like iphones are great and all but I want the shotgun mic on it. I, like, I want a real proper camera. Yeah. Like, f- for the vlogging and whatnot. So I think that's what's one thing I'm going to stick with. Um, and I'm realizing how much I miss video games. <laughs> I miss video games. So I think I'm going to try to, like, put more of that into my life again. Good. I slowly, like, just drifted away, like, Right now, during Corona, I want to say out the week, I'll probably pop on a video game for like five to six days out the week now. Yes, same. <laughs> so, same. Yeah, it's it's more like that. So it's, it's a different. And I think it's important, especially for like people like us that are so used to just like grinding and hustling and working nonstop and like not really treating ourselves. You know, I think it's important to have those outlets that provide just like a break you know like yeah we're not doing any type of work or any type it's just like a break you know and then get back to it yeah well that is all that i have really well so i was your first guest on your like your first podcast friend yes well, bes- yeah. well besides rj besides rj um well, rj's not a podcast no offense rj sorry go off hello you're, you're um, retired <laughs> he did, he did. Um, but, um definitely in this in this new format, you are the first. Yeah. I mean hopefully hopefully we could like be in person soon because like I do like I said, I do miss everybody. Like I miss uh I miss I miss y'all, you and Addy. I miss my core friends. Mm-hmm. Um I miss I miss all my creative friends second yeah. technically. Um and like I said, I want this vlog so like i want i want to that's what my vlog is about is showcasing everything that i done in life and like i'm about to be 30 years old so um like i tell you like right now i got this headband on because my receipt and <laughs> hairline so i'm like i use the headband as a distraction Go on. Um, <laughs> um but i'm about to be 30 years old i want to uh i want to 
I want to be able to say I got every creative project that I wanted to do out the way by the time I'm 35. And it, like, and if it's still like bringing like money to my pocket, who knows? Maybe I'll still do it, or maybe I won't. And just focus on like technology yeah. in general. Um, but I just want to at least say I oh I did that when I was younger. You know what I keep thinking about? I keep thinking about it's so morbid, but I keep thinking about like when I'm on uh, my deathbed in the hospital that I'll just be able to bring up all the archives and just like all the episodes we've done together and things like that. Like literally just like replay a, a chunk of your life and just like the mindset that we were in and the conversations that we were having. I think like, cause I think it'll make it less lonely, you know? Like, yeah. So. Yeah, it's, it's something satisfying knowing that you guys like, you did things that you was like always wanting to do. Like a bucket list, you did things you yeah. always wanted to do and you did it and now you have it like saved somewhere. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Whether it's YouTube, SoundCloud, or whatever. Hello. All right, I'm going to, I don't know how this goes, but I'm going to stop the recording. But after you uh, stop the recording, it's going to be like converting, and then you, got, you have to let it convert. <laughs>